Hello there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Omar and I'm an illustrator and sketchbook artist and today I'm going to be trying out three different brands of watercolour pencils. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. We're going to start off with the unboxing and then I'm going to swatch all the coloured pencils that I bought and then I'm going to create a lovely sketchbook piece using some of the coloured pencils. Please join me. The first box that I've got here is from Jackson's Art and we've got some Albert Durier watercolour pencils. I picked these colours out myself from their online shop so it'll be interesting to see how they perform. And also we have got a tube of Schmincke Perylene Green. I've used the Winsor & Newton version but I needed to replace it so this will be interesting to see. Something that I opened up because I was so excited is the Winsor & Newton Oxide of Chromium and both these green pigments is something that I was recommended by my friend Liz Watkins and I'll give you a link to her YouTube channel, she's great. Now these are from Cult Pens, these are the Derwent Ink Dense Pencils that I've seen loads of artists use and I just wanted to give them a go. Again, I picked them out using colour choices that I'm drawn to and I'm going to give you a full rundown of these when I swatch them. Now, full disclosure, these Lyra coloured pencils were also from Cult Pens, but I ordered them a week before and I've already tested them out a little bit, but I'm going to swatch them for you anyhow. And in the same Cult Pens order were some brush pens that I really like the look of and I'm going to swatch these for you as well. So just to recap, I am going to be testing out watercolour pencils by Lyra, Ink Tense by Derwent, and also Albrecht Durer by Faber-Castell. So I'm going to test all of these out, starting with those two green watercolours. This is just a cartridge paper. Let's start with this Oxide of Chromium. Uh, this is a green that I heard uh, friend and fellow watercolourist called Liz Watkins uh, use and Liz has an absolutely fantastic zine called London Greens it was uh, studies that she'd done whilst in lockdown oh look at that that is nice so that's quite thick for me just going to water it down that's very nice indeed I can see how uh, these could have a lot of uses and this is the Perylene Green. Uh, I did originally have a Winsor & Newton pan, but um, it was rather expensive, so I thought I'd try the Schmincke version. Oh, you can see it is so, so dark. It's beautifully dark. I'm just gonna water it down a little bit more. Nice, a little bit more again. I can see how that could have a lot of uses in my landscapes. These brush pens by Sakura, I saw a friend of mine um, that I met out in Singapore. She was using these uh, during a sort of an urban sketches meetup in Penang. And um, I basically screenshotted it and Googled it and it comes in um, different colors. So I've got uh, sort of a brown, a sepia and the black. And I was just really intrigued. So it says micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof fine lines. Let's give this a go. Oh, 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 yes, yes. I love this type of line. I don't really like lines which are exactly the same width. I just can't stand it. But this could be incredibly up my street. So that's that one. Let's try this sepia. Wonderful. And I think this is just black, this one here. I love that it's able to create these really fine lines, but also do that if you hold the side of the pen. I want to try these out fairly methodically. Uh, this is the uh, 
Albrecht Durier by Faber Castell and this is dark Naples ochre so I think what I'm going to do is just use it um, dry I'm pressing pretty hard and I'm going to do a, a lighter version here and now I'm going to press hard again and light but I think this time I'm going to add some water oh look at that that one there I'm just going to go back into it if I were to work back into this damp area you've got some other gorgeous textures happening really really nice and if I I'm just going to dip my pencil in plain water let's see what happens there so I think it's got many many uses that is such a lovely color right um, I should write that down actually now this one whoops is green gold same again here press down hard and I'm not entirely sure I've already got a colour like this in my just normal coloured pencil collection or not exactly like this they're similar right let's add some water to this oh, look at that look how that changes things up oh I say that's almost luminous oh, look at that that really is quite something just going to dip my pencil in water. Oh, God, that looks almost autumnal. How marvellous. So write that down, green gold. This next one is called orange glaze. This next one is called orange glaze. so bright unbelievably bright I had no idea wowzers okay let's just push this pencil back through this area oh, that is really really nice so many effects to be achieved right moving back up here we've got three left let's start off with this one coral oh that's a bit wet there it's all right that's a nice color i wouldn't say it's salmon it's kind of um sort of less Sub it's more subdued rather I like pulling the pencil through the damp area and you can see how different it is from the area which is dry paper so I've just dipped mine in um, water and it if you were to try and mix it in completely I don't know that it dissolves it might just be the paper that I'm using but that's okay let's do this one this is olive green now oh, that seems to dissolve a lot better actually wonderful really really oh gosh I'm very excited <laughs> just want to keep on playing and the last one is this blue and it is called light fallow blue right let's get some water on these areas that's quite muted actually I thought it'd be a little bit stronger it's just wonderful for textures, I think. 
I'm not going to be passing any judgement on these pencils because I haven't tried all of them and it's the first time that I've used them so I'm going to talk a little bit more about these right at the end. If you're enjoying this video so far please leave a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and that would really help me out. Let me know if you use watercolour pencils and how you like to incorporate them in your sketches. Right let's try the ink tents next. Something I want to point out is I generally use quite muted colours anyhow and it is difficult to choose online so I made the best guess and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they turn out. We've got two greens here, fern green and leaf green. Let's try leaf green first. I don't think it seems to be going on as um, sort of creamily is the only way I can describe it as the um, Faber Castells. But let's see how it performs when I add some water. Oh, that is a beautiful colour. That's almost like gold green. Oops, picked up the wrong pencil entirely. Sorry. <laughs> That's rather ruined my plans. Is that the right green? Yeah. Oh, it looks very different when um, it's introduced to water. I have to say, I am very surprised. But I like it. I like it very much. Next up is the fern green. Again, I, I'm having to push down much, much harder to get some coverage. It's quite bright. It looks very, very different when it's wet. That tiny bit lighter. Interesting. Right, down here we've probably got just enough room for uh, this one, which is deep indigo. Oh, look at that. And this one here, that is a bit gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, that is so deep. I just want to push some of that green through there just to see what happens. Oh, I say, it's a bit gorgeous. Next, I'm going to try this Shiraz. It looks like a burgundy. Oops, as you might expect from a name like that. Oh, very nice. Doesn't blend in very much. Oh, let me try a, a different version. That's a little bit better. Oh, that's very smooth. When you put it on a wet area, I rather like that. Next up we have mauve. It, it looks um, the type of pencil that I would probably use colour wise, just as a coloured pencil. But when you add water to it, oh, that is a very bright violet, actually. Oh, you get all sorts happening. I'm just going to mix that in with some of that Shiraz, see what happens. Oh, that is nice. That's lovely. Now this one is a variation, dusky purple. Oh, that looks very dark indeed. It's definitely a sort of coloured pencil I would buy just as a coloured pencil, but let's add some water to this. Oh, I think that's just like aubergine, I think, for me. Oh, that's beautiful colour. That's really, really gorgeous. Oh, look how intense that is. I say, that really could have a lot of uses. I'm just going to pick up one of those greens, mix that in there. That is 
jolly interesting. Let's try out this Payne's Grey. Get some water in there. Nice. Thought it would be a little bit darker, but let's go in there again, working on top. Yeah, when there's water in there, it goes really, really dark. Just fantastic. That's the difference. Let's grab that Shiraz again. Oh, let's see how those two mix together. Oh, I love that. I love that combo. Okay, so that was Payne's Grey. And next up, we have Madder Brown. Hmm, now this one seems to be going on a bit smoother than the others. Ah, okay. That's a gorgeous, rich, chocolatey type of brown, isn't it? That's going to be jolly useful. Hold on, let me just grab, um, what's this one? The dusky mauve, dusky purple even. Just mix those two together, see what happens. Oh, you get all sorts of things happening. Wonderful. This last one by Derwent Intense is Asphalt. Oh, that's quite cool. Sort of a cool, dark, cool grey. Hold on, let me just do a light version here. Grab the water. I think there's still a little bit of purple on that brush. Ah, it looks warmer when you add water to it. That's interesting, isn't it? You get all these different things happening at various stages of wetness, depending on if you... Um, one thing I haven't done with any of these, I forgot. Let's just dampen the paper here and then apply the pencil on top. So that's dry and that's wet. And then if I were to wet that area again, I'm not sure it blends in too well, but I'm not using actual watercolour paper. So interesting to see what happens when I do actual sketches. I've realised I've run out of paper, so I'm going back to this original sheet that I tested the pens on. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Lyra Rembrandt Aquarelle. This one is called Night Green. And to me, it doesn't really look like green. It almost looks like a, an aqua, sort of a dark cobalt green, I suppose. Um, let's give some water to this. That really just looks like blue. It's almost like a, a cobalt, almost. That is beautiful though. This next one is called light cobalt. So it be interesting to see how this one turns out. Now, as a, as a blue, as a colored pencil, it's not one that I would naturally gravitate to, but let's see what happens when we add some water. Ooh. That's a lovely blue. I just might add some of that green to it. Oh, that makes a lovely effect, that does. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Van Dyke Brown. I'm having to push rather hard, even compared to that Derwent. Oh, that gives a, a nice sort of nut brown, I suppose. It's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. It's more of a mid brown. Okay, and let's pick up another one. This is the um, cinnamon. Oh, okay. Give this a go. Oh, that's a very nice russet type brown, I suppose. Oh, it's very warm. It's very, it is very rust-like, I suppose. Now these are quite mid-value. Um, I thought this brown would be a little bit darker, but let's um, mix that together. Oh, that does look very nice, actually. 
Um, right, we've got two left. The first one is, oh, I can't find it, Venetian Red. Now that is quite similar to that cinnamon. Let's see what happens when I add the water there. Could be quite different. Um, hmm. I don't think it is very different. For it, I would say it's probably just that little shade darker, but there's not very much in it. Yeah, they look incredibly similar. Hmm. Before I forget, I must write these down. This last one is dark orange. Nice, goes on nicely. A bit lighter, let's do another one up here to test out. I have to say they're not blending as well as the other two. Um, it might be different on actual watercolour paper, but colour-wise you know, it's very nice. I like this very, very much. It's very, very bright. Um, hold on, dark orange. Often when I do these unboxings and then try out the different materials, I often have comments saying, why didn't you try this brand? Why didn't you try that? The thing is, we all have different personal tastes. The way I like to use coloured pencils is going to be different to the next two artists, and that's because we are unique. Some people might prefer the Derwent's, some people might prefer the Faber-Castell, and that's absolutely fine. I'm just here out of curiosity because that's the type of person I am and we'll probably end up using our coloured pencils in 10 different ways. Let's start with these Derwent's. Colour-wise, I absolutely adore the colours that I was able to choose from quite a large set. If I try to get close, you can see that most of the time the colour pencil really has dissolved quite nicely. I think it helps, especially in this area here, when you put the colour pencil on top of an already damp area, it gives a real intensity. Moving on to the Faber Castells, I thought these colours were more vivid in some cases, especially like this orange, it's just beautiful, beautiful, and that green gold um, is not quite what I was expecting but um, that Naples yellow really is quite gorgeous. I think, um, you know, it, at places it does dissolve into that water, but it did look a little bit hit and miss to me. I think it just depends on what you're doing and how long the water has been on the paper. And these Lyras, they are nice, but um, I don't, mind using them. I think it would be better if I were to test all of these out uh, like on an actual piece. Uh, they turned out very different to what I imagined when you apply water to them. Uh, that's my only sort of concern. But overall I am going to try using these new watercolour pencils on a piece in my sketchbook. This is the Patreon of my friend Jen Burbage and I joined recently because I thought I could do with some um, more animals in my sketches. I'm not sure I'd, I want to go to insects just yet but there was um, some birds that I thought would be really interesting for me. I don't do birds um, very very rarely so I'm going to try and use the watercolour pencils to create some of these. Starlings, blue tit, robin, uh, wren, these are very British birds so um, let's take a look at my sketchbook and what I've done so far. So this is a very rough shape of this robin here and I hope to use the coloured pencil to add more of the details such as the beak and the feathers. Uh, might have to use a bit of Posca pen and this um, goldfinch I think is um, this one here. So I think um, it's going to be an interesting exercise. I am just picking out coloured pencils based on their colour rather than the brand. I only have one bright orange for the red breast of the robin, so I use the Lyra. Overall, I think I've got a really good collection of colours that I can work with in future projects. 
My friend Liz Watkins, who recommended that chromium oxide, uses a Tipex pen instead of a white Posca pen. And uh, it looked really effective when she did it. So I'm gonna give it a go in the breast of this robin here. I have to press down on it like a Posca pen and it comes out pretty fast. I use my little finger just to spread out the white tipex and I think it looks really effective. It's really, really opaque. And the wonderful thing about having such a thin nib is it can be very directional and you can apply it in the smallest of spaces. I'm gonna use um, that Secura brush pen just to give a bit of definition to the wings. Um, I think it just needs a, a dark contrast, especially where the wing meets the body. And in that tail as well. Maybe even the eyes and the beak. I don't know if that beak's a little bit too large. If you're enjoying this content so far please do leave a thumbs up comment and consider subscribing to my channel and also i have a patreon where you can see more process videos like this and two live sessions a month
say I'm jolly pleased with these for somebody who doesn't really draw birds that often. Rather fond of that robin, very plump. <laughs> um, I think working with coloured pencil on top of that watercolour, uh, and I do have that textured background as well, um, it means that I can work pretty fast. And you can see where I've tried to blend in some of the areas and it means that I can be a little bit more detailed by using the colored pencil and there's a lot of texture in the breast of this um, little blue tit here. I, I think the white tipex does work well. Overall, not a bad job. I'm definitely gonna be using these watercolor pencils again. If you've enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a thumbs up and a comment. Let me know which brands of watercolour pencils you use and how you like to use them. Until next time, stay amazing.